Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. My name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer and recruitment professional Colin Singer. Colin is managed partner of Immigration.ca as well as managing partner of Global Recruiters of Montreal. So today we're going to be discussing, well before we get started, just to, just to cover the CRS scores, I, Colin, there was a draw yesterday actually. So the CRS scores actually are at an all-time low. So the CRS score was 423 and this was on April 12th. So in the past three weeks, we've actually seen three draws. So before that, on April 5th, the CRS score was 431. And before that, two weeks before, on March 24th, the CRS score was 441. So we're seeing this trend of the CRS scores going down. So uh, that ties in nicely with our topic of discussion, and that is a quarterly review of 2017. So we're going to see what has been happening in Express Entry for the first quarter of this year. So Colin, lower CRS scores and more invitations. Well, that has been the trend, and uh, it's consistent with what took place in the first three months. Um, it's interesting to look at what's happened in the first three months in comparison to each of the past two years. So if we look at the first six months of 2017, the number of invitations has really uh, far exceeded the numbers from the previous years. We had over 24,000 in the first three years of 2017 invitations issued. For each draw, that works out to in the first seven draws of, of this year that end by the end of March, we're averaging about 4,100 invitations per draw. This is significantly higher than what happened in 2016 when for the same period we had not about 9,500 invitations over seven draws and that worked out to about 1,350 invitations per draw for the same period. And in 2016, uh, the numbers of draws for that period, there were only six draws in 2015. That was the first year uh, when Express Entry first came into uh, operation. There were about 6,850 invitations issued for the three-month period. And that worked out to about 1,140 uh, invitations per draw. So okay. the, the, uh, the growth and the uh, increase in the number of, of invitations per draw is, is obviously quite striking and, and quite interesting. Uh, what's also interesting, of course, is the, the CRS scores uh, for uh, each of those uh, years. Uh, the, the CRS score for the, th the draws that took place this year it's averaging about 449, bearing in mind what's happened in the last three weeks, we're down to 423. So there's an acceleration of CRS score declines, although uh, compared to previous years, uh, the, the CRS score on average was 461. Uh, and the first year, which is really not a fair comparison, right. uh, it, it was only 696, I uh, sh sh shouldn't say only, it was so high. Uh, and it's not fair to really try to compare uh, CRS scores from year to year uh, because really uh, the, the system has really evolved and, and the way they calculate points now is quite different, of course, uh, than when it first started. But I mean, what are the reasons? So, I mean, okay, so as, as you mentioned, there's been an increase in the invitations to apply. What are the reasons for this? Well, there's four main reasons that we can look to that explain why is there such a dramatic increase over 24,000 invitations first three months of this year compared to previous years. Uh, well, look, the, the numbers of invitations they need to reach, we've said this before, the economic category is going to, uh, on, the, on the annual immigration levels, Canada is planning to bring in 77,000. That's the high end. They're looking to achieve around 72,700. But they always have a high uh, a, a target level uh, and a low. Uh, but if we look at the high level, which for, for many practitioners we think the government is probably going to reach more on the high side. Uh, so they need to attract a lot of candidates, we've said this before, yes. uh, where they've got to reach high in order to, to get close to the numbers that they're looking to achieve. So 
uh, bringing in 77,000 on the high side under economic class. Um, and, and it's also interesting because the government now has data that they didn't have before. Right. You know, three years of data, which there's a linkage between how many invitations they need to issue and how many candidates actually file an application. So there is a drop-off factor. The government hasn't shared uh, the current uh, current year. They haven't given us the, 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 the formal results of what took place in 2016. But indications are that the drop-off factor, meaning the number of people who don't perfect their applications after receiving an invitation, you have 90 days. So it's it's alarming that almost 40% uh, informally, we don't have the number yet, but we're pretty confident it's quite close to 40% who don't submit an application. It means either they're not ready to go to Canada, they don't have the full documentation on hand, uh, and perhaps other reasons. Uh, that, that, that's the second reason. And the third reason is that the government needs to uh, carefully allocate, uh, and they need to, to have people landing in this year, uh, which means the second quarter is very important, uh, and perhaps the last quarter will be important as well, because we saw an increase in, in 2015 and 2016. The last uh, few draws of, 2000, uh, of each year will see a, a, quite an increase. So each quarter, represents an important period in terms of how the flow of candidates will come. Okay. So they have a good understanding now, and that's the third reason, okay. is they have a good understanding and they need to ramp up in the beginning of the year in order to have people in ready coming to Canada in this current year. Okay. So it's a, it's a function of how many people they hope to have coming to Canada. And of course, there's a fourth reason, and, and that is we don't, we don't have a backlog of applicants in the system, uh, from the old system, uh, as much uh, as it used to be. And, and that actually was the reason they brought in Express Entry, was to be able to manage the volume of applications. So now uh, it's a question that the old system is completely, uh, has, has been culled and, and the applications have been processed uh, through and, and now uh, the numbers coming to Canada uh, entirely uh, will, will come from the express entry system. Okay. So that now gives you, an, uh, you know, gives us a feel as to why the numbers will continue to be pretty high. Okay, so, so we've seen an increase in the invitations to apply for express entry go up significantly. The decrease in the CRS score, however, has been more gradual, and what are the reasons for that? It has been more gradual, although it's, it's, if we look at the past three weeks, going from 440 uh, now to 423. But right. if we look at the first three months uh, compared to previous years, the decline in CR scores are, are quite healthy, but obviously not as dramatic as the number of invitations that have, uh, have, have, have grown over each of the past three years. Now, obviously, there's reasons that relate to the caliber of candidates. So candidates are uh, becoming aware of, of how to increase their CRS score. Um, the caliber of candidates is obviously growing uh, to the point where uh, there's a, a large number of candidates in the mid 400s and low 400s uh, who are now becoming aware of, of what they need to, to, to attain uh, to, to receive an invitation. So you've got a good quality of, of candidates. But I think what also has partly limited the, 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 the dramatic decline, although it's, it's healthy in the, in the CRS core, it, it is quite interesting, but there's been a reorientation of how they allocate points. Uh, primarily moving 600 points away from an LMIA uh, and, and restricting, giving 600 only to provincial nominee candidates. That really had a dramatic effect on the overall alignment uh, of the number of, of points candidates will get. Uh, we've also had uh, the November uh, changes saw uh, 
points being given to people who uh, are studying in Canada. So as uh, candidates are, are, are submitting their applications and as the pool of candidates who've studied in Canada, we see, uh, we'll see uh, the scores uh, declining in a sense, but not uh, as rapidly as, so things are going to stabilize uh, in the low 400s and okay. they might even move up a bit right. or, or might come down a, a, a bit, but I think we're starting to get closer mm -hmm. to uh, a realistic, uh, let's say, area of, of, of CRS scores, uh, and, and that's going to uh, certainly solidify even more as we move forward in time. Again, having the data, having a large pool of candidates, uh, an increasing number of candidates who've studied in Canada or who uh, work in Canada and are entitled to 50 points, uh, for a work permit. Uh, so all of these factors together will, um, will give rise to uh, uh, monumental shifts, unlikely, in, in the okay. CRS score, okay. but gradual uh, moving up and down as the pool fills with candidates of varying backgrounds. Okay. So, I mean, with that being said, every little, po every point counts, every bit counts. So, I mean, it's very important to Inc look at your profile and see how you can actually increase your CRS score because there are ways. We did a video on September 22nd on, of last year on how to increase your CRS score and we also did another video um, on March 27th and that was how to find a job in Canada. So I mean if you do find a job in Canada that does get you the 50 extra points. Well that's it. Uh, you know people who are in the uh, 350 plus range Anyone who's in the 350 plus range, really, this is an opportune time for you because with a job in hand, if you are successful in finding a Canadian employer, uh, you're, you're obviously really getting close to the thresholds of scores that are uh, giving rise to an invitation to apply. Right. Uh, so anyone who's in the 350 plus range, now's a time for you to be seriously considering a, a project to Canada under the express entry system. Right. Uh, obviously, uh, you're a, a, a bit uh, shy of the current 423. We think the, the future looks good. We'll, we'll cover that in a few moments. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if you're in the 350 plus range, working with a firm such as ours, right. uh, where we're offering help and, and really uh, substantive assistance in finding work. But uh, if you check our um, uh, Facebook uh, video uh, carousel, yeah. you'll see these really good videos that we've done. Uh, the one that we recently completed, which was really one of our more popular ones, is, is how to find a job in Canada. Yeah. Uh, that's really going to give you some insight on what you need to do to find a job. Uh, and of course, how to boost your CRS score, uh, which as you highlight, becomes vital, how do you increase by five points, for example? Because now uh, every segment of points is, is going to make a difference if you're in the express entry pool. The difference between, uh, obviously, the previous one uh, at 431 going down to 427, what does it take to, to uh, move your score up by four or five points? Uh, if you watch our video uh, that we did, on September 22nd, that's going to give you some good positive insight into what you need to try to do. Okay. So, I mean, Colin, I mean, what can we expect going forward into the second quarter of 2017? Well, indications are we're already seeing that uh, for the first uh, couple of weeks in April. Uh, we're seeing, we expect to see, again, looking at all the numbers, uh, probably another six or seven draws in the next quarter. Uh, invitation numbers will surely be in, you know, high 3,000s, perhaps uh, 4,000 uh, at some point. Uh, CRS scores look, I mean, we can't predict the future because what we don't know is how many candidates will be coming forward into the pool. Uh, week by week, candidates are entered. Again, 12 months is how long a profile can remain in the pool. It, it, it gets removed automatically. Uh, but obviously, we're, we're, we're expecting scores to stay healthy, surely under 450, realistically in the low 400s. At some point this year, it wouldn't 
surprise us if we start seeing CRS scores in the 390s, 380s. Uh, again, if you're a candidate that has a CRS score in the 350 range, and what we'll do on our next live stream uh, is, is break down what it takes to get 350. What does it take to get 400 and 425? What are the profiles of candidates? That's going to be on our next live stream, really driving down in the numbers. But what we can expect to see for the next quarter, another six to seven draws, scores in the low 400s. Uh, and, and really, there's another major change that's going to be taking place uh, on June 6th. Uh, important changes that are going to deal with how points are calculated and surely how uh, points are awarded. Uh, they're going to obviously, uh, which they haven't done before, which will affect some candidates giving points for siblings, yes. uh, points for, for uh, francophone, uh, French as a second language, right. those that have uh, reasonably advanced uh, French language skills will benefit from these changes coming in on June 6. Uh, I think what we often try to do is relate uh, the immigration policies with the Canadian job market. Obviously, that is why we have uh, a, a robust immigration program. Uh, and if you look at what's been taking place in the economy over the past three months, uh, readers will be able to read some of our material under immigration news section, uh, you'll see that the latest job numbers point to an unemployment rate, a falling unemployment rate uh, under 7%. We're at 6.7%. Uh, there were, in the first quarter, 83,000 uh, jobs that were created, that were added to the economy. Uh, and from the previous 12-month uh, March, ending March 2017, going back 12 months, uh, the economy created 276,000 jobs. Uh, so we're seeing uh, it, it, it's been a slow improvement in the economy. There are other metrics that are interesting that point to uh, a curing economy. Uh, you, you also have the, um, the bank rate, uh, which was held steady. Uh, they were talking about cutting the rate. Uh, because there was talk in the uh, end of, of 2016 and in the first uh, of two months of 2017, there was discussion that they might consider a rate cut uh, to stimulate the economy further. Uh, but the uh, Bank of Canada has, has uh, uh, put a break on, on any discussion of, of cutting the rates. They're holding the rate steady, which means, obviously, uh, a heating economy uh, good prospects for employment. Uh, so all said and done, uh, you know, it, it seems to be uh, good opportunities uh, in the Canadian immigration uh, sphere uh, for candidates to come forward. Why don't we share with them uh, what we can do for people. Okay, well, and if, you would, if you're interested in coming to Canada, please go to our website, immigration.ca, and complete our free online evaluation form. And we'll get back to you with regards to your options. I mean, we'll assist you with your immigration as well as your em employment search assistance as well. If you're interested in the topic that we discussed today as well, please go to the news section of our website where you can actually read through what we discussed. And also we have other news articles as well. And if you want to stay up to date, please follow us with on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. On our social media, we'll keep you up to date with the latest developments in Canadian immigration news. Well, Colin, uh, that's, that concludes our topic that for today. That concludes our topic. Our, our next planned uh, event will probably be in two weeks' time. Uh, what we're going to try to uh, cover at that time, look out for uh, what, it, what the various profiles uh, require and, and what points you get. So we're going to start uh, looking into what is it a profile uh, comprised of and what it takes to, to reach 400 points, what kinds of candidates uh, will generally receive uh, points in the 400 range. So that'll be our next topic. Watch out for that. Uh, thanks very much for joining us Thank today. You very much. And um, right. well, we'll see you in the next live stream. Thanks so much. Thank you.